السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لسان يفقه قولي سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت عليم الحكيم My dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam and everyone else who's watching uh, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect you and bless you in this very difficult time that uh, the entire globe is facing and uh, I thought perhaps that uh, these reminders inshallah that I'm about to share with you would offer some solace to the heart, some comfort to all of us inshallah and uh, uh, strengthen our iman and strengthen our belief that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has never abandoned us. Uh, stay at home, this is the slogan and this is the uh, command of so many countries around the world asking us to stay at home, uh, but what are we going to do at home? Uh, my brothers and sisters in Islam, this is a time of reflection. This is, uh, I believe, a time for self-evaluation. This is a time where we ask ourselves that if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would reverse the situation in our favor once again, how would we utilize our time? Uh, those same legs, those same limbs that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had created for you since the beginning of your life are still with you at home, are still with you during this lockdown time. But when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala free us, will we walk toward the masjid uh, when it is very convenient for us to stay at home? Uh, will, we, will we abandon the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again? Or will we really take that time as a lesson? Uh, and inshallah ta'ala do that which is pleasing to Allah. So it's a self-evaluation time. In fact, I... I am so happy and I don't want that to be misunderstood, but I'm, I'm so happy that perhaps this would be a wake-up call for all of us <clears throat> to make us, uh, inshallah ta'ala, make you turn uh, and do that which is uh, appropriate and do that which is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I, uh, I, call, I recall the, the Prophet sallallahu narration, the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu ihris ala ma yanfa'uk. Uh, be keen and adhere to that which is benefit you the most. <clears throat> billah and always seek help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wala ta'ajaz and don't be weak. Uh, these are subhanAllah the beautiful advice given to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu to a believer. That we should always adhere to that which is beneficial to us. So ask yourself now, how can I utilize that time when I am behind closed doors with my family members, what, I, what am I going to do and what are we going to do during this period that will benefit us, inshallah, not only in this dunya, not only in matters of this dunya, but how can we benefit ourselves also in matters related to the hereafter, inshallah ta'ala. Wasta'in billah and seek help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dua. That's the tool that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given us to change the qadr itself. Subhanallah, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Al-qadr wal-du'a ya'talijani ila yawm al-qiyamah. Qadr and du'a, they resist one another until the day of judgment. Perhaps the qadr of Allah was to test us uh, through this COVID-19 and other diseases and other challenges in life. But du'a, the du'a of a sincere believer could push that qadr back. Can you imagine? <clears throat> the thing that, uh, that cannot change is the qada of Allah, the things that had already come to existence, that already had taken place and it's irreversible. These, these qadars or these parts of the qada of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can never change. But the qadar or the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is, ir that is reversible can only be reversible through our dua. Can you imagine? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had reminded us. In the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminded us that the most important ayah in Surah Al-Fatiha is إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ You alone, Ya Allah, we worship and you alone we ask for help. <clears throat> Why is it the most important ayah in Surah Al-Fatiha? Because basically it summarizes our purpose of existence. Ibadah. وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I have not created jinn nor mankind except for one purpose and that is to worship me. And isti'ana, to, to bear in mind that whatever we do, <coughs> whatever we wanted to achieve in life, excuse me, 
uh, it would be only possible by the assistance and aid of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلَا تَعْجِزْ And don't be weak. Don't feel that you are weakened because our masjids have been locked and are closed down and we are told not to perform our Jum'ah to, to save lives actually. And we are uh, sadly told also that Taraweeh will not be possible this year. Don't be weak. وَلَا تَهِنُوا وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا وَأَنْتُمُ الْأَعْلَوْنَا إِنْ كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ Do not be weak, my brothers and sisters, and do not be saddened. While Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given you the upper hand, if you are believers, if you have these qualities of iman, then don't be sad and don't be weakened. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loved the mu'min, loved the, the believer who is strong spiritually and strong physically. So seize this opportunity while you are at home by uh, strengthen your iman, strengthen your spirituality and strengthen your physical being as well by being active. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala <coughs> grant us good health insha'Allah ta'ala. Many people have been asking scholars around and asking people of knowledge uh, in the past few weeks, few months about uh, this test of COVID-19 whether it is a punishment or a, a test, a trial for the believers. Look, my brothers and sisters in Islam, every test that is uh, given to uh, uh, at a large scale, just like, like COVID-19, which affects Muslims and non-Muslims alike, uh, it will be taken individually. We cannot say it is an entirely test. We cannot say it's, it's entirely punishment. Uh, it's like the example given by uh, Sheikh Fadl Sulaiman in one of his... Uh, videos he said imagine yourself living in a building with uh, many many neighbors some are muslims some are non-muslims among the muslims some are sinners some are alcoholics or people who engage in zina and among the disbelievers are kind-hearted people or atheists or agnostics and that building was crashed and the entire inhabitants were killed or died will allah subhanahu wa ta'ala <clears throat> consider the death as a punishment or as a trial or as an elevation in rewards every single person depending on what they used to do will be judged uh, accordingly according to the justice and mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala similarly COVID-19 could be punishment for some and could be uh, trials for others so don't bother too much about what is it is it a punishment or is it a trial rather Think about your own condition now as an individual and ask yourself, what is it that I need to do now to rectify the situation? If I was sinner, if I was uh, a righteous, how can I increase uh, my, my, my righteous deeds and how can I depend to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and go back to Him and do that which is pleasing to Him? <clears throat> this should be our concern, our concern in this very, very difficult time. Uh, the Prophet ﷺ explained to Aisha radiallahu anha wa ardaha when the plague Ta'un had spread, he said it was a, a, a rahmah, a mercy to the believers. Uh, SubhanAllah, in fact, uh, some people, they considered it to be a blessing. Like, you know, they welcomed it because they know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala elevate the status of believers when they are tested harshly. Uh, and the, high, the, the harder the test, the higher the reward. Remember this, if you're patient and if you accept it with contentment. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward us all. I just wanted to share a few stories of those people who were locked down in the past and how was their behaviors and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responded to their plea. Uh, the first one is Yunus alayhi salam when he was swallowed by a whale uh, as a result of some... Uh, uh, actions that he had done. Uh, some scholars debated this, so whether it was uh, a disobedient on his part or not, but we don't want to get into the details. But the Quran mentioned uh, his story in a, in a very beautiful, sublime language. And when Yunus alayhi salam, the noon is uh, uh, the, the person of the whale or the person of the fish. When he went up uh, angrily, uh, and he thought that we cannot get hold of him and we cannot, uh, we are not capable of disciplining him. 
And in another recitation, فَظَنَّ أَنْ لَنْ يُقَدَرَ عَلَيْهِ And he thought that nothing could overtake him or nothing could discipline him or, or, or nothing can have power over him. These are the understanding and the translations and the, in, of different translation. فَنَادَ فِي الظُّلُمَاتِ So whether, whether he was a disobedient uh, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or perhaps he had those slips or mistakes, unintentional mistakes of the Prophet, his response to what happened was beautiful. فَنَادَ فِي الظُّلُمَاتِ Then he called upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while he's locked down in the darkness. In the darkness here, the darkness of the fish, the whale, the belly of the whale, and the darkness of the night, and the darkness of the sea. ظُلُمَاتٌ فَوْقَ ظُلُمَاتٌ Darkness upon darkness, subhanAllah al He was locked down in a way that we can never imagine or comprehend. Uh, subhanAllah al No one of us would even bear uh, thinking that he would be swallowed whole by a whale. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. But he was locked down in a, in a way... Uh, far uh, more far more difficult than any of the lockdown that we are experiencing today yet he called upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again dua is coming here fanada fi dhulumati an la ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu min adh-dhalimin he called upon Allah in a way that he's not beseeching Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or, or praying to Allah to take him out of his difficulty or to deliver him to this to the shore he's uh, just praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he's he's uh, remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he's acknowledging the wrong that he had done la ilaha illa anta subhanak uh, there is no god worthy of worship o allah except you subhana glory be to you inni kuntu min al-zalimin indeed i was among the wrongdoers and from that lesson my brothers and sisters in islam we may learn that this is a time for us to acknowledge our wrong to admit that we have done wrong no matter what wrong you have done it doesn't matter minor or major uh, it's a time to repent and to turn back to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and acknowledge that with humility this is a sign of humility and to apologize to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to ask Allah to forgive us. Maybe that uh, alone can be the, 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 the tool by which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would deliver us from this uh, pandemic. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us uh, all. And as a result, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَاسْتَجَبْنَا لَهُ then we responded to him. And the letter fa in Arabic here in the word فَاسْتَجَبْنَا we responded to him indicates the speed, the hastiness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in responding to his dua. وَنَجَّيْنَاهُ مِنَ الْغَمِّ And we delivered him from his distress. وَكَذَلِكَ نُنْجِي الْمُؤْمِنِينَ And this is how we save the believers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that this is the tool, this is one of the tools, is to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in repentance and to acknowledge your wrong, to admit that what you have done in the past was wrong. وَكَذَلِكَ nunji al mu'minin, And thus we save the believers. And in another qira'ah, in another mode of recitation, and thus the believers are saved. So in one qira'ah, in one mode of recitation, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is referring to Yunus alayhi salam saying, and this is how we... Uh, we save the believers if they follow these two uh, uh, two tools uh, to acknowledge your wrong and to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in supplication and uh, in dua. And in the second recitation, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that this has been the way all along of how we save the believers of the past. So it's, it's beautiful, uh, you know, when you reflect over different modes of recitation because it, gi- it gives you uh, a lot of a broader understanding of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has expected from you. And that's why one of the dua that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had taught us Sayyidul Istighfar and the master of the duas of seeking forgiveness. Allahumma anta rabbi, O oh Allah, you are my Lord. La ilaha illa anta. There is no God worthy of worship except you. You have created me and I am your servant. And I shall follow 
and obey your covenant and, and follow your covenant to the best of my ability. I seek refuge. I ask you protection from that evil which I have uh, uh, performed. So again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching us through the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu that acknowledging the sin is the beginning of repentance. Then uh, another lock up situation that took place in history is the uh, Shab ibn Abi Talib when the Prophet وسلم, and his companions were locked down in a in an open desert. Uh, they boycott them completely. No one, you know, deal with them. No one deliver to them food. No one come out. No one enters for three years. Only those who have good hearts would be smuggling food and necessity from time to time. But people were really living in a miserable life. And that did not make them leave the religion. That did not make them lose their faith and iman. In fact, they, they came out of that situation even stronger believers. Some, some of them died afterwards. Khadija radiallahu anha wa ardaha. So the situation was so tough. Again, if we compare the lockdown that we are having, we, we live in luxury. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep on blessing us with His bounties. We live in luxury by brothers and sisters in Islam. But look at them. They were locked in an open desert. They would eat one date and they chew on the seed for a couple of days because there was no food. Yet those weak people at that time, they were the strongest of the strongest uh, uh, Muhammad sallam, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala send his peace and mercy upon the Prophet sallam, and his great uh, companions. We look at another uh, lockdown situation that took place in the history and that is the lockdown uh, or the lock up of Yusuf alayhi salam in jail. Subhanallah al-Azim, one of the most favorite part of the story is that when he conversed when he conversed with his uh, the companions of the of the prison, first of all he said, "Qala qala Rabbi sijnu ahabu ilayya mimma yadounani ilay." He said when he was uh, accused for having an affair with the wife of Al Aziz, and they decided to uh, throw him in jail. He said, "Wallahi jail qala Rabbi." He said, "My Lord, jail is more beloved to me than what they are calling me to do, than than zina wa la so subhanallah al-azim, perhaps uh, when you were left out there in, in the world, uh, freely going at any time you want, perhaps uh, you used to sin a lot and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala want to bring you back to your family so that you can connect with your wife instead of going out and hanging out with the wrong company, perhaps. So maybe you should, that's why I said in the beginning, I'm happy with the, with, with the situation, but in a way, of course, I'm not happy with the disease that had killed many people around the world. But I'm happy that perhaps the lock up or the lockdown uh, period would change lives and make people better. So this is, this is a time that we should reflect, as I mentioned in the beginning, we look at the story of Yusuf alayhi salam, he said, jail is much better than zina. So perhaps we can reflect over this and look into our situation and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept that period where we will be behind closed doors and make that period the best period ever so that we, when we go out, inshallah ta'ala, we can uh, uh, influence people positively and, and, and become better human beings and become better Muslims and fill up the messages, whether in Fajr or other uh, time uh, during the day, whether in Jum'ah, in Ramadan, or other time of the year. This is a lesson. And by the way, in my opinion, the, the real test will happen. The real test will take place when, when this whole pandemic thing is over, when we go back to our normal life. Then the test will start. Allah now will see who will go to the masjids and who will become lazy again and just uh, pray alone or pray at home or pr not praying at, at all. So that's the real test. Now it's a time for us to reform our situation. But the real test, in my opinion, will take place after the lockdown is over. Uh, but as I said, that uh, one of the best part of Surah Yusuf is the conversation between himself and the, the, the two companions. And again, this is a time for us to reflect. How can we uh, use that story for our benefit? Uh, so uh, they ask him to, you know, uh, interpret some of the dreams that they have seen and Immediately Yusuf alayhi salam 
before interpreting the dream, he uses this opportunity to do da'wah, to invite them to the one who created them and created everything. So he said, ذَلِكُمَا مِمَّا عَلَّمَنِي رَبِّي You're asking me because you know that I can interpret the dream, but I wanted to, I want to draw your attention to something very important, that this is not uh, something that I do on my own. This is what Allah, my Lord, had taught me. Yeah? Uh, he, he sees this opportunity, and then he started talking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and inviting them to, to Islam. He said what? إِنِّي تَرَكْتُ مِلَّةَ قَوْمٍ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ I have left, I have abandoned a way of life of people who do not believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وَهُمْ بِالْآخِرَةِ هُمْ كَافِرُونَ And they disbelieve, they don't have faith in the hereafter. وَاتَّبَعْتُ مِلَّةَ آبَائِي And I followed the way of life of my forefathers, Ibrahim, wa Ishaq, wa Yaqub. مَا كَانَ لَنَا أَن نُشْرِكْ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ شَيْءٍ It was not intended, it was not meant for us to associate partners with Allah. This was not, this is not why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us. ذَلِكَ مِنْ فَضْلِ اللَّهِ عَلَيْنَا This is among the bounties of Allah upon us. وَعَلَى النَّاسِ And upon everyone. وَلَكِنَّ أَكْثَرَ النَّاسِ لَا يَشْكُرُونَ But the majority of mankind, they do not praise, they do not uh, show gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look at how Yusuf alayhi salam sees this opportunity. One question, can you interpret our dream? Immediately he started directing their attention to the fact that Allah exists and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the deity that we should worship and should praise and should uh, be grateful to. Ya sahibay sidni. And then he called him, Oh my, my companion of this jail, أَأَرْبَابُ مُتَفَرِّقُونَ خَيْرٌ أَمِ اللَّهِ الْوَاحِدِ الْقَهَارِ are many lords and gods uh, deviated and uh, divided better or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the one, the irresistible. مَا تَعْبُدُونَ مِن دُونِهِ إِلَّا أَسْمَاءً سَمَّيْتُمُوهَا أَنْتُمْ وَآبَاءُكُمْ You don't worship except that which you have invented, that you have named you and your forefather. مَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهُ بِهَا مِنْ سُلْطَانٍ Allah had never commanded us, Allah had never revealed such a thing. The judgment, the final judgment will be left to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Amara Allah ta'budu illa iya. He had commanded that you should worship none but Him. This is the appropriate religion. This is the appropriate way of life. But the majority of people do not know. Only then, my brothers and sisters, after all this introduction about Allah and our deen, He started to. Uh, interpret the dream. The lesson is that Alhamdulillah with the, with the help of technology now you can use it in your favor. Now you can use it to spread the deen of Allah. I'm so glad and I'm so moved to see many mashayikh who had never actually accessed uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all these social media that are available, seeing them now, mashallah, tabarakallah, realizing that it is the time to seize this opportunity because millions and billions of people will spend longer hours during this lockdown time uh, on, on the social media. And as a result, mashallah, tabarakallah, in the past couple of weeks, they flooded the internet with beneficial lectures and reminders and nightly talks and weekly, what they call virtual khutbahs. May Allah bless them all. So seize the opportunity now for uh, da'wah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Uh, final point, inshallah, Ibn, uh, Ibn Taymiyyah, rahmatullahi alayhi, uh, may Allah have mercy upon him when he was sent to jail, subhanallah. He went while he's smiling and uh, he said his famous quote about jail. He said, Sijni khulwa. My jail is seclusion. It's, it's the time now that I will have more hours with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What will my enemies do to me, he said. Uh, if, if they send me away, it's, for me it's tourism. And if they jail me, uh, it's time for me to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, in seclusion. Uh, in peace. So seize this opportunity, my brothers and sisters in Islam. And uh, inshallah ta'ala, Allah will deliver us from this uh, pandemic that we have never experienced in our uh, lifetime. Uh, I hope and I pray that those few words were uh, beneficial to you, inspiring, inspiring words for you, inshallah. And if you liked uh, whatever has been said, uh, because it's uh, 
from the tawfiq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then perhaps share it with others for their benefits. And if there are any mistakes I have made, it's uh, be only because I'm a human being. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive our shortcomings. Ameen. Jazakumullahu khayran. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.